Listen, it's shocking. It's written about in the book of Revelation. Could it ever happen? The answer is, unfortunately, yes. Total population control. Bill Benny says that's what the National Security Agency wants. He should know. He was technical director of that agency and worked there for more than 30 years. He became one of their top analysts, perhaps the best code breaker in America, before he resigns because of their domestic spying programs. He's with us now from Washington. Bill, thank you so much for being with us. We're glad to see you. Well, thanks for having me, Pat. Uh, look, how big is this apparatus of the NSA? We, we hear about it, but you know firsthand. Uh, well, there, I think there are about 40,000 people working at Fort Meade at NSA headquarters, uh, close to 40,000. Uh, and then they have facilities all around the world, plus uh, a number of contractors also associated with one, probably on the order of uh, 100,000, I would think, to 200,000 that work for them directly. Um, so it's a rather large operation. I mean, uh, it's, it's between 10 and 15 billion dollars a year that they spend on it uh, uh, ever since 9-11. Uh, so that's, you know, quite a, quite a bit of money they're investing in it. How, how much data can they uh, uh, acquire? Is there any limit to it? Actually, it, uh, the only limit is uh, in terms of money, power, availability, and space to, add, to, to stack equipment to go and collect the, the material. Well, now, now you said, a, now you've said that the ultimate goal is total population control. In a democracy, that is really scary business. It's actually a totalitarian process that's been used down through history. I mean, that's what totalitarian dictators, states, they, that, that's what they want to do. They want to know everything about the population so they can control it. That was the idea behind the Soviet Union, the East German Stasi, that was their idea, and the Gestapo and the SS, and down through history, many others. Is our stuff more powerful than those agencies you mentioned? Yeah, unfortunately it is. Uh, that's that's the real the real problem I see is that it's the capacity is when you're looking at electronic activity of individuals like when you use your credit card or when you uh, uh, when you make a phone call or email anybody on the on the internet or or do chatter on the internet that can be monitored in near real time if the if the necessary otherwise they can capture it collect it store it and then retroactively analyze it so it's something that uh, it, it provides the opportunity to monitor everybody in the country, in fact, most everybody in the world, uh, in near real time throughout the day. And that's, that's really uh, uh, a, um, a 1984 on steroids, really. All right, now let, let's take uh, Mrs. Joe Average living in Topeka, Kansas. And uh, she goes to the store and buys something with a credit card. NSA's got that right then? They, uh, they have electronic data. They, they'll collect uh, uh, financial act transactions, sure. She calls her friend Myrtle down the street. That phone is monitored, that call? Uh, not all of them, but a good many of them are recorded. Um, uh, certainly all of the fact that they, she made that call is, uh, is recorded and stored and, and what we call graft, that is building relationships. That's one of the real problems here. It, this is a violation of your First Amendment rights. Under the Constitution, you have the right to assemble, um, free, free, free assembly, uh -huh. which means that uh, it doesn't say you have the right to free assembly as long as the government knows about it, which is what's happening when the telecommunications companies turn over all their records of phone calls to and from with duration. That tells them everybody you're contacting, your whole social network on the phone, uh, because it's a simple matter of doing a reverse lookup to see who that is that you're calling. Oh, you quit the agency because you said what they were doing is unconstitutional. Could you, that is clearly unconstitutional, but the, why does the government keep on doing it? Um, that's uh, the reason I've been able to, at least from what I can see in public, in the public domain, is they're doing it for law enforcement worldwide. And um, uh, actually the main users of this data are in fact FBI and the Drug Enforcement Administration and other law enforcement agencies in the in the country and they, they they use this data to find criminal activity and then they go arrest people uh, based on this information 
uh, and uh, then they have to do a parallel construction, which means they use normal policing techniques that they would uh, be expected to use to find evidence that would justify and show probable cause for an arrest. Then they substitute that for the NSA data in the in the courts. In fact, mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's one of the one of the one of the things that happened uh, in challenging that process was one of the lawsuits was um, Amnesty International versus Clapper, and that made it to the Supreme Court. And uh, the only way they got rid of that was to basically lie to the Supreme Court and say that, well, if anybody had any of this data used against them in the court of law or anything, that the defend they, defendants would be told. And that was simply a lie. Nobody has been told to date. All right. Uh when I when I think of this, it's just horrible. But uh, uh, do they give this information to the IRS? That's the other problem. Uh, the D Drug Enforcement Administration has a special unit, the Special Operations Division, the SOD, and that's the that division is supposed to. Its primary purpose is to look into the NSA data, to to find criminality and criminal activity. Uh, the members of that are um, the CIA, the NSA, uh, the FBI, of course DEA, uh, DHS, and the IRS. Now that means that the IRS has active action actually has act act access to all the data of the social networks of everybody in the country because NSA builds those in the databases that they have from the billing data or the or the contact data that's provided by the telecommunications companies. So this, in effect, allows them, if they're, if they're interested in stopping anybody uh, getting a 501c3 uh, application in for um, uh, tax-exempt status for, for, say, someone in the Tea Party uh, or the Act, Act, Act Occupy group or any religious group attempting to get 501c3 uh, uh, or uh, tax-exempt status, they would look, could look into that mapped, graphed relationships and see if you're a part of any organization that they perhaps want to stonewall or slow roll and prevent from uh, becoming politically active. And that's what's been going on. They've had access yeah. to this data. And uh, uh, one person was testifying in the, um, uh, the House and, uh, Judiciary Committee, I believe it was, about some of the questions they were being asked by the IRS. And one of the questions that was asked that gave me the idea that they were using this information was this one person uh, was asked, uh, what, what is their relationship with another person? It was a specific name. Well, uh, the question I had was not what was their relationship, but how did the IRS know about that relationship? The only way I could think of that they would know was be through this access to the data in NSA, which is where all that information is mapped out. So what you're saying is the NSA slips this stuff to them, they read it, get a clue, get, and then they go through their normal procedures and act like it, they didn't get the information, but they got it from another source, so they, they pull the wool over Congress. Do you, you know, the congressman, they, yes, go ahead. And they also use that in court, which means in my, in my sense that, that, that means they're perjuring themselves in court. So I call that a planned program perjury policy run by the Department of Justice of the United States. You know, I'm horrified at all this, and I'm sure the average of America, you know, most of the congressmen, are they, they come out of neighborhoods and they're elected by the people. Do you think Congress has even a clue as to what you're talking about? Uh, probably not, uh, not a complete clue, but I think that that's part of the reason that uh, Representatives Amos and Conyers got a coalition of, uh, of members of the House to try to unfund NSA's activity last year. They almost made it by about 12 votes. They lost 12 by 12 votes, but they came pretty close for a first try. So there is a move in Congress to, to limit and stop this. And it really is all of this activity, is, it's unconstitutional under the first, fourth, and fifth amendments. The first, because they're giving your, your associations and everything, the government is collecting that data. The fourth, because they're looking at the content. It's not just metadata that they're collecting, it's content also. Um, and and uh, and the fifth, because they're using data that you you the content of data that you pass between your friends and neighbors and and uh, use that against you in a court of law, that's a violation of the Fifth Amendment. That, that is to have uh, you're not you you are claim you can claim the Fifth Amendment not to mm. testify against yourself. Wait, well, well, that's a violation of that too. How come some little guy didn't come after you in the middle of the night, or have they? 
They have, actually. <laughs> uh, they sent the FBI at me uh, uh, in 2007 and tried to intimidate me to stay quiet. Uh, what about Snowden? Is he a traitor or a hero? I looked at him as a as doing a, a an absolute public service, not just to the people of this country, but to the to the world, because he produced evidence that's irrefutable by our government. That's the crimes against the Constitution and the laws that we had over time, anyway. Uh, so that was irrefutable evidence of what they were doing, and so they cannot deny it now. What kind of megalomaniac would want to do something like this? this is monstrous, and and these guys, I mean. Where does the mindset come from that devises all this stuff? Well, that's what I objected to and why I left NSA early on back in 2001, because I saw this coming. I mean, I had worked the Soviet uh, Union problem uh, for almost 30 years, and, and it was very clear to me that in October of 2001, the NSA and the government, the U.S. government, started adopting the procedures and techniques and processes that the Soviet Union and the Stasi and, and all of the uh, countries behind the Iron Curtain were using. So we were, we were actually adopting their procedures. It was very clear to me that that was what was going on. All right, last question. Uh, the average person doesn't have a vestige of knowledge of what you're talking about. They just trust their government. What are we going to do as citizens? Uh, well, you see, uh, th let me let me say something about that first. That's that's really the problem here in this country. You see, uh, from my where I see what I see is, we have not had a dicta dictator in this country for almost since George the Third for almost 240 years. So we've been very comfortable over those 240 years, at least, kind of depending on our government to do the right thing, and that's what we've all been accustomed to them doing. That is, we trust them and have trusted them for a long time. And so uh, we don't have that knowledge of what dictators and dictatorial processes are. But if you look at it, the Germans today are the ones who are really uh, upset about this. And the reason they're upset is because they've got living memory of the Stasi and living memory of the SS and Gestapo. So they, they're very familiar with these techniques and procedures, and that's why they're very upset. To me, I think uh, the only way we can get out of this is to uh, fire everybody in D.C. <laughs> I think that's the only way to do it. You have to go out and vote. You have to get active. You can't stay quiet and let this happen. You have to stand up and oppose it. Bill Benny, thank you so much. You're a great patriot and keep speaking out. And oh, we'll ask prayer for you for your protection because I can't imagine they're going to let you keep on talking, but maybe they will. Well. Well, folks, if you well, want to learn more about Bill Benny and the NSA, you can go to our website. There's more detail about it. And you know something, as he was talking, the Bible makes a statement in the book of Revelation that people could not buy or sell without the mark of the beast. And you said, okay, there is no way that there's any governmental agency that could enforce something like that. And what this man, who is the technical director of the NSA, former technical director, is saying is that the government now has the technique to do this worldwide. You know, Google has maps of every, if you have a little shack up in the hills someplace, Google's got a map of how to get there. And that's a private agency. And, you know, your credit cards, your telephone calls, but the thing is, what he's saying is that you pick up the phone and call uh, your girlfriend, and that's monitored, and that's recorded. And uh, it, it's, it's frightening. You don't have to be saying, you know, I, I, I want to plot against the government. It just, it's a normal conversation. And they call it metadata and all that stuff. And it, it, well, we don't understand it enough. So we say, well, oh, yeah, well, we don't want to have terrorists. We don't want to have blow up, blowing up our airplanes. Well, of course we don't. But uh, is it the price of safety for a few passengers on an occasional airplane? Is that worth taking away the liberties of all the people? And the answer is no. But this is Big Brother. It is what is written in the book of Revelation, and it finally can happen in our lifetime. This is scary stuff. Shocking, really. Isn't it? Shocking. I remember reading uh, 1984 and mm -hmm. books like The Late Great Planet Earth and thinking that could never happen in our country. People would never buy into that. And here we sit. 
Well, it's like the old business of the frog in the water. You, can, yeah. you heat it up slowly, and we're, we're more and more accustomed to it. And every time it comes out and they say, oh, well, it's okay, it's the USA Patriot Act. It was put in by George Bush. These are good guys. And this is, you've got a nice general up there. He's a three-star general. He's got a benign-looking face, and you figure he's not going to hurt you. And so he's in charge, and then somebody else will. Well, we also grew up being taught and believing that the check and balance system in our That's government right. was going to take care of all well, of this. This is huge. The, the gathering is in the billions and billions and billions of bits, and it is we finally have the capacity to control every human being on the face of the earth. <gasps> oh. <laughs> Clean them up! That's what he said. Throw the bums out and let's start afresh. <laughs>